Jeff wanted to share his new Guild guitar with us today. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. So that's right, Jeff did my new Guitar Day service so we could check out this cool guild. And I'm pretty excited to check this thing out because these were definitely not on my radar before Jeff's email. So it's kind of like Guild's version of an SG, except for it's a little bit more offset. That's right, Gibson SGs are not perfectly symmetrical. I'm sorry I ruined them for you. But yet this is nice and gaudy with the gold hardware. We've got a little bit of fancy electronics going on here. It is a set net construction. It's only about $899 brand new, so a lot cheaper than a Gibson. But yeah, at the same time, this does not look or feel cheap straight out of the box. Because look at it, that's a pretty fancy looking headstock, even if it is perloid inlays. We've got block inlays. We've got our usual 22 frets. Interesting guild style knobs. Those have a really flat profile to them, like they're literally just sitting right on top of the guitar. And then instead of thumb bleeders, it looks like we actually have insets into the body of like a little metal button. And check out this cool tailpiece, it's screwed into the top. Seems like quite the unit, I can't wait to take a look at the back of that. This thing's got a decent weight to it, not too light, not too heavy, and I'm liking this heel design. It's very rounded, seems to be pretty comfortable. So first off, let's do a little bit of history on Guild guitars. It appears that they've used the name Polera ever since the 60s, but as far as this exact S100, it looks like the first time they came out was sometime in the 70s. Again, I don't know all the nitty gritty details on these, but just by looking at some of these online, I really fell in love with the S100C version because it's kind of like a 70s carved natural version of one of these. It's got some interesting engravings on it. And I'm a big fan of 70s SGs, even if they are not as historically correct as their 60s brethren. So it's kind of like just discovering something semi what more affordable that still looks cool that has some age to it that's not your usual knockoff or lawsuit era guitar but this is actually a signature guild polera s100 for kim fail now if you haven't heard his name before you've heard of his band soundgarden you know he worked with chris cornell but as far as what makes this a signature model well you get your truss rod cover here featuring the king animal decal and you also get kim's signature on our back plate here with the bad motor finger emblem but for 900 bucks, you get just the guitar. There's no case, there's no gig bag, so you'll have to buy that separately. And they only provide you this as far as case candy goes. Some sort of like a burlap bag, a guild owner's manual. Looks like a decal sticker if you want to use it. A truss rod tool and instructions on how to use said truss rod tool. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs and then get to a playing demo to see if this sounds as good as it feels so far. Let's go ahead and check this thing out. So starting with our pickups. In case you missed it, they have a very interesting pickup cover to them. So it outlines where the pole pieces would be. I'm just assuming you have slug coils there. That's why the other ones aren't exposed. But if you had something like a Gibson Dirty Fingers, that would honestly look pretty good with two rows of adjustable pole pieces. But something else that you'll notice is different about these as compared to some other hubmuckers you might have seen. Two sets of adjustable screws and one on that side. So that kind of helps tilt your pickup if you're into finally adjusting your pickups. They don't really have too fancy of a name, it's just the Guild HB1 series humbuckers. And on the back they look like this. It says neck, pick, ups, BHK, and then the same thing for the bridge. You'll notice the bridge has a black wire and the neck has a gray wire that helps them solder them to the right pots. And it looks like we've got some good shielding paint on the inside. And in the neck cavity it looks like this. It appears to be a long neck tenon. Our readings within the circuit, 7.08 in the bridge position, 7.09 in the neck, and our middle just for fun, 3.54, and the switch shouldn't really change anything with our readings. Check out this bridge, it's actually kind of cool. So it's just screwed into the top. There's not actually posts that it secures to, so it has to be decked no matter what. I guess unless you put some spacers under it. But it's got a really cool style to it. it reminds me of like a car hood or something, but this thing is chunky. I mean, it's almost five ounces. I mean, that's pretty heavy for something that small. I would say that's about twice as much as regular tailpieces. But here's what the back of it looks like, as well as our sides that the strings go through. So there's two theories for that. A, it could help fight neck dive. B, a lot of times people think more massive bridge and tailpiece gives you better sustain. Then our bridge is kind of ABR1 in style. It has the retainer wire, but yet it still has the metric style posts. That way you can adjust it easily. 
But here's the thing, if these pickups and this bridge is not good enough for you, there is a higher end version of this guitar. They only made 30 of them, they're USA crafted, and they came in a white finish, but it had the higher end pickups, it had the more vintage correct bridge, it also cost 10 times as much, that's right, it was just shy of $10,000. So I think for most people, the 899 version will certainly suffice. What on earth, Guild? This is the first time I've seen their knobs. This is the anti-spinal tap. These go to 11. They only go to nine. These things are so quiet. Or maybe they took that guy's advice and just made nine one louder so they don't even need to go. <laughs> but it's kind of cool how they label them on the side right here versus on the top. But you got your cool guild logos. So many times when you have a little tiny switch like this, it's usually for like coil splitting. However, that is not the case. This is a phase switch. So what that means for you is in the middle position only. You can have your regular two humbuckers going, kind of get a nice chimey tone. Or you can flip it to the out of phase kind of greeny quacky sound. But I do want to mention something here. If you ever have a toggle switch, that does not want to stay in position. There's two things that could be going on here. You have wires in the way on the backside, but check this first. Usually, every time, it's actually your switch tip. By the way, if we look at this one, it's kind of a cool metal material. It's quite large. But screw it all the way in, it doesn't stay. If you just turn it a little bit, it's perfect. What happens is the skirt of this touches the area where it's not supposed to, and that's what pushes it back. So that solved the issue on this one. I mean, literally, just maybe an eighth of a turn if that and it's still on there pretty good and if you don't like the tip being slightly loose you can just take this and grind it down just a little bit however much you need it that's a lot easier to do on a plastic tip though we can take a second to appreciate our jet black finish you've got some comfort carves here i mean this shows polishing scratches fingerprints and all that good stuff and this is what it looks like without a pick guard on there. It looks like they're using only four screws to secure it. And it is a five layer guard with the back being black and they do ship with a protective film over them. Moving on from our likely multi-piece mahogany body, we have a mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard. We've got 22 frets, but I like these because they're jumbo frets, but they're not like wide. The spec sheet calls them narrow jumbo. That's the first time I've ran across these, but honestly, I kind of dig the look of them. Just a bit taller than I'm used to seeing, but they don't look like giant railroad tracks. And again, these are acrylic inlays, but if you step up to the big boy 10K model, you do get mother of pearl. But I really like the figuring of the wood right here. And the rosewood board reminds me of Brazilian, but trust me, this is not Brazilian. They also call it a 12 and a half inch fretboard radius and a 24 three quarter inch scale. But I measure a 1.7 inch nut width, which increases to 2.09 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.82. And wow, 0.92 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the first and 12th fret. The spec sheets call it a soft U-shaped neck. Moving on to our headstock, you can see our truss rod route. That's insane how deep that is in there. You definitely need a nice long tool for that one. I guess Guild puts their truss rod covers big side up, little side down. They actually do have a protective film over top of it. They don't want your emblem getting scratched. And then despite the headstock also being purloid, it looks really good as is. This has a really cool vintage aesthetic to it, so that's why I'm digging it. Now let's move on to the back. I want to take special mention of these strap buttons. Look at how proud they stand out on the guitar. Like, it might not be that noticeable on this one. But feeling it at the base, I mean, it stands up so far. They call these the vintage pawn style. You know, like chess. So it kind of makes sense. It's interesting. I could see that becoming an issue in shipping, though. Because that's just a big chisel. You get a big hit there, just cracks the guitar straight up the middle. But for ease of putting your strap on... Very nice. But again, we've got a cool little comfort cut down here. Kind of reminds me of the late 70s Gibson ones. Not quite as extreme as many manufacturers do yet today. Just enough to be there. And then our electronics. These appear to be Korean made pots. And you can see how they're wired. Maybe not the cleanest wiring job I've ever seen. But it seems to work. And here's a look at the back plate cover. Again, it has protective film just like everything else. And is shielded on the back. It's a nice rounded over heel design. Feels quite good in my hands. And then our ebony finish, our don't throw me away sticker, and our serial number with Grover tuners. All said and done, just a hair under eight pounds, seven pounds, 15.4 ounces on my scale. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how these pickups sound. 
first off, that tailpiece seems to be doing its job, but it is not neck heavy. But now let's hear the tones. <laughs> nice chugginess to it. Yeah, I'd say I like that humbucker quite a lot. We know all about this guild signature guitar what are my final thoughts on this thing i'm glad i did the review and documentation because it opened up my eyes to a whole different world of guitars i never realized he wasn't playing a gibson sg in some of those music videos i like the fact that it doesn't neck dive on this particular example they've designed that well however despite not being that heavy of a guitar it feels heavy due to the weight distribution kind of down this way. As far as the setup out of the box, I think the nut is just a little bit high on this one because the first fret can be kind of hard to play. You got to put a lot of pressure to get the strings to meet your fret. And I would say this is a stiffer feeling guitar, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. This guitar excels in doing the whole chuggy chug thing, which is probably what you're trying to do here. So slap on some really heavy gauge strings. You're not going to have that issue anymore because the strings are going to be a little bit thicker and detune it you're gonna have a lot of fun. Basically, it all just comes down to that switch tip. Once you know to loosen it a little bit, then it works perfectly fine. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed learning about this model with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.